So we are continuing on our uh, operations research course. Uh, we talked a little bit in the last lecture that uh, in operations research you have to make a model for an actual system to be able to study it, optimize it and do whatever you want uh, with it in terms um, of um, reducing the costs or increasing efficiency and so on. So today we are focusing on uh, in more details on the model types. What kind of models you will see in the uh, operations research problems that you face in real life or in theory, let's say. So the you can see here these models are named in kind of pairs because it depends if you want to uh, classify each model type then you want to focus on a certain area are you caring about the how dynamic is the model or the linearity of the model or the um, mathematical side of the model so we can see in here we will start with static and dynamic models what is a static model it is a model in which the decision variables are not involving sequence of decisions over multiple periods. It means it's not varying with time. It's static. It's fixed. A dynamic model on the other side, it is a model where the decision variables does involve sequence of decisions over multiple periods of time. So each period of time will have uh, different dynamic variables that will affect your decision as you're moving forward. That's more close to real life uh, problems where you need to have a dynamic model that is accounting for the day-to-day -day cost, day-to-day -day efficiency, progression, and completion. So each day is different than the previous one let's say if if you it depend on how you look at your system if you look at your system on the long run then you know that in a year that's your goal that's your variables that you expect unless there's unexpected actions happen but in the if you want to look closely day by day process or let's say month by month depending on your system um, aggressiveness and how much it is uh, how much it's dynamic and how much how fast it's changing with time uh, depending each system have a different nature than the other system so in short story dynamic model is the safe way to go for real life uh, problems that's too much generalized statement but just let's keep it general it doesn't apply to every single problem so the static model um, in that case, you solve one shot problem. The solution will be uh, prescribing the optimal values for the decision variables at all points of time. If you are doing a static modeling for a one month operation, then that decision that you will make will apply from day one to day 30 for that month. Same decision. We have same variables, same inputs, same outputs in short story. Um, for the dynamic model, let's say you have a company and that company need to determine um, how they can drop down their costs um, for uh, meeting the demand of, let's say they're selling boats during the next year. Then in this case, this company need to determine how many boats that need to produce uh, during each of the next four quarters of a year assuming that uh, their business model is depending or splitting the year into four quarters and so on. The second model type pairs are linearity models. Is your model linear or nonlinear? That's what you care about. So in the objective function and the constraints of optimization 
for the model, then the decision variables always mo be multiplied by constants and then add it together. If that's the case, you have, let's say if you can imagine that as equation, you have constants multiplied by uh, uh, decision variables, then of course that's a linear equation. We call it a linear model. But if your optimization model is um, not linear, which means you have a more complex uh, equation sets, then we call it a nonlinear model. Maybe it will sound foggy and cloudy for you for now, but later on we will have examples and it will be more clear. Just what we care now, linear model is a simple, straightforward model. Simple doesn't mean uh, simple in terms of mathematics. It is can be easy, uh, easily solved and easily represented. Nonlinear model means um, a model that's more complex and the mathematical solution for that model could be uh, more of a challenge. So as we can see here, that is an example of a nonlinear model. How we know that? So you have here one of the variables squared. Let's assume the t squared. Let's assume it like uh, 0.001x multiplied by t minus 0.01x squared, you know, etc., etc. So that's a nonlinear model. So nonlinear models harder solve than the linear models, as you may know from your previous experience with the mathematics. Then the third uh, pair of models that we care about is your model integer or non-integer. So if one decision variables need to be integer, then the optimization model called integer model. Like if all your con decision variables need to be constants, that is an integer model because you have integers multiplied by decision variables. If all decision variables are uh, free to be um, represented in terms of fraction values, then the, opti the optimization model is called a non-integer model. So we can say that if you have values like volume, temperature, uh, percentage composition, um, and pressure as inputs, we can always assume them as fractional values. Uh, if the decision variables represent the number of workers, let's say, they start to work um, at a certain time on each shift, um, let's say in a fast food restaurant, then you have an integer model because you can't say two men and a half are working um, on the grill or on the fryer while half man is, is serving um, on the register and so on. So you need to keep the physical meanings behind the problems that you're facing because most of them are real life problems. So you can't be um, non-logic about it. Third model pair is, do we have a deterministic model or a stochastic model? So the value of the objective function, whether or not the constraints are satisfied um, is known with certainty, then that we can call a deterministic model because it is determined, it's having high certainty, we are more sure about this model and his values. But if, if the case is different, you are not sure, it's cloudy, there's a doubt in your model or in your system, then we call it a stochastic model. There's a certain way of dealing with um, each one of those models. As, we, as I mentioned previously, we will talk and we will take some examples about each of these model types, or let's say about the main ones that matters. Um, so just to clarify how, how the things are going, how you're going to create models and how to differentiate if this problem can go with this kind of model type and that kind of model type. Okay, next we will talk about seven steps for the model uh, building process. So we have here seven steps for model building process. So firstly, you need to formulate the problem. You want to understand the problem. Um, 
being able to comprehend it and just understand what is really the problem is and how does the system go, what are the components of that system, how each component is depending on the other one and how it is independent from the other one. So when you are an operations researcher, you need firstly define the organization problem. Then, um, defining the problem, need, that means you need to specify the organization objectives and the parts of the organization that need to be studied before the problem can be solved. For the step number two, you need to observe the system. You want to verify by yourself, is that really a problem or not? So as operations researchers, again, you need to collect data and estimate the value parameters that affect the organizational problem. These estimates are usually used to develop, evaluate, um, and um, trying to understand uh, all the aspects of it to be able to uh, develop a mathematical model for the organization problem. If you don't understand it, you can't model it. Third step, you need to formulate a mathematical model of the problem. Like you need to physically write a mathematical prob, uh, model for the, for the problem. The uh, operation researchers usually develop mathematical models for the problem. And uh, we will talk about a lot of mathematical techniques that we can use in order to model various system cases. Step number four, you need to verify the model and use the model for prediction. So you need to try to determine if the mathematical model that you developed previously is accurate and it is accurately representing the reality. And that can be done by comparing the real outputs with your outputs on a short term. If you run the numbers in your model while in real life, does it match your model? Like, let's say you're modeling for McDonald's. You want to tell him how many workers he need uh, based on the new customer's demands. Let's say there's more customers to McDonald's these days uh, that, like expected for this year and the coming year to double the customers compared to the last year because of many aspects that could be the case. So what you're going to do? Let's say they called you to do some kind of analysis. Do they have enough workers in that branch to serve the expected customers? Then you want to look at how long it takes to go through um, each sub process and each component and sub component in the system and how many uh, workers do they have right now and if they can handle that with their current resources or they need more resources in terms of workers and uh, machines etc step number five you need to select the best alternative or the alternative that um, fits the case for your model so you have a model and you need to have a set of alternatives um, you need to choose the alternatives that uh, perfectly meet the organization objectives so don't depend on one source sometimes keep it as what what they call it as a plan b you want to be ready for any surprises. If your um, calculation and your estimation for the workforce in that certain restaurant, you said that it can handle it, then you want to still have plan B. What if they couldn't handle it? How are you going to still manage the situation or um, cover the problem? And uh, let's say in more clear words, how to recover that problem and uh, get back to normal in almost no time. Step number six, you need to present the results and conclusions of the study to the organization. So you need what is called in the industry today, documentation. You want to tell what you did and how you did it. How did you verify that your model can accurately predict for up to a certain confidence level? It can predict the real life situation and keep that on file and keep all things clear for whoever comes behind you or for the company that are asking you uh, for consultation to be able to understand it by themselves and maybe in some cases they will be able to redo uh, what you did for their uh, future variables. 